Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Al Salem Foundation and ADHRB for inviting me here today. Um, this morning I'm going to speak on the opinion of the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention um, in the case of Ms. Hajar Mansour Hassan. And that's an opinion for which Reprieve helped to coordinate the complaint. Um, just a couple of words on Reprieve. Reprieve is an international legal action charity which was founded in 1999 uh, by human rights lawyer Clive Stafford Smith. Um, we provide support to some of the world's most vulnerable people, including people sentenced to death and those victimised by states' <coughs> abusive counter-terrorism policies. Uh, based in London, but with offices and partners throughout the world, Reprieve is currently working on behalf of 77 people facing the death penalty in 16 countries, including Bahrain. Um, Reprieve's vision is a world free of execution, torture and detention without due process. Now, in Bahrain, Reprieve's work is focused on those facing the death penalty. We currently assist three death row prisoners, Meher Abbas al-Khabbas, Hussein Musa, and Mohammed Ramadan. All three men suffered appalling torture at the hands of Bahraini institutions, leading to confessions uh, to death penalty offences. Now, on our work in Bahrain, Reprieve works in close conjunction with our partner organizations, uh, the Bahrain Institute for Rights and Democracy, BIRD, and Americans for Democracy and Human Rights in Bahrain, ADRHRB. <coughs> ADHRB, so. But in 2017, there were reprisals against three members of the family of Sayyid al Wadai, the director of BIRD, and our very close partner. We believe that these reprisals were a result of Sayyid's work as a human rights activist, particularly concerning his activism on death penalty cases in Bahrain. It is for this reason that we became engaged on this case. Sayyid al wadai who has sought and been granted asylum in the UK, is an internationally respected <coughs> human rights defender and a vital partner in the work against the death penalty and breaches of human rights related to the death penalty in Bahrain. As acknowledged in the European Union guidelines on human rights defenders, human rights defenders like Sayyid are increasingly coming under attack and it is vital to the protection of all human rights that the rights of human rights defenders are upheld. By way of background, the family of Mr. al Wadai have been subjected to numerous human rights violations by the Bahraini authorities in response to Byrd's work, including arbitrary detention, unfair trial, ill treatment, and possible torture. In April 2018, Reprieve submitted a complaint to the UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, WAGAD, that concerns the persecution of three Bahraini citizens, all of whom were members of the family of Sayyid. They were his brother-in-law, Sayyid Nazar al wadai who was 19 years old at the time of the complaint, his wife's cousin, Mahmoud Mansour, 30 years old, and his mother-in-law. Hajar Mansour Hassan, 49 years old at the time. Given that we're here today to discuss female political prisoners in Bahrain, I will focus specifically on Hajar. Hajar, along with her son, Sayyid, and nephew, Mahmoud, was detained and tortured by Bahraini government officials. They were coerced into confessing to involvement in a purported terrorist activity, which included the planting of fake bombs in January 2017. All three have subsequently been tried and convicted in trials that relied on those confessions and they remain in custody. As the working group complaint alleged, they were persecuted as a form of reprisal against Sayyid for his ongoing advocacy in support of democracy and human rights, which has generally been critical of the Bahraini government. Their detention is therefore arbitrary and stands in ongoing breach of international law. With regards to the arrest itself, on the 5th of March 2017, Herger Mansour Hassan was sum summoned to attend the Office of the Criminal Investigations Directorate, the CID, for interrogation within two hours. At the office, while waiting to be interrogated, Herger received a phone call from her son, Sayyid Nazar al Wadai. He explained that he had been tortured by CID officials and described his initial interrogation. Hedger immediately called a family member to inform them that she had received a call from her son. This was the last time that Hedger spoke to her family before she too was arrested. Hedger was interrogated without a lawyer present and without being informed of the charges against her. She was held in detention for three days without charge. 
She was then in interrogated from 4.15 p.m. to 2.30 in the morning on the 5th of March 2017. Throughout this period, she was required to remain standing. This resulted in her collapsing and fainting and sustaining an injury to her hand and shoulder. She was transferred by ambulance to a hospital where she was given intravenous fluids.